There I am. There he is. <laughs> Bob. Now, Bob has been a Toastmaster like forever. It's absolutely wonderful. I've got a great list of things that he has done, but and it's... It's just amazing. He's This is his second icebreaker in 58 years, which I'm actually surprised about because quite a few people over that time do their icebreakers, you know, at various other times, not just only only twice. So that's quite interesting. He was the, um, in every leadership um, possible that he can possibly be, and he was the international president in 1976. And he got his first DTM in... 1975, which is a long time ago. Now, I won't read everything that you've done, Bob, but I think you're absolutely amazing, and I would love to hear you give your icebreaker, which will be evaluated by... Here we go, by speech one. Oh, another new person who has stepped up to the plate today, Godalis, but I will introduce her later. I will let you give your speech now. Thank you very much. Good, Alice. Would you like to come forward so we can see that you're listening to um, Bob's speech? Yes, I will. Thank you. Because it's always better to give a speech when you've got a couple of people listening to you rather than just doing it to the screen. <laughs> thank you, Bob. Oh, thank you, Graham, for coming forward too. The, the stage is yours, Bob. Thank you very okay. much. Okay. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster and my fellow Toastmasters. We're going to take a trip today covering 70 years of my life in six minutes. That's wow. not a fabricated story. <laughs> if you'll walk with me, maybe you can keep track of how many times I point out a a year that will collect that that's up to 70, 30 years, excuse me. As a young man in Ogden, Utah, where I grew up, I cleaned my grandfather's horse stables. But I did grow up and go to school. And in 1942, when I was finishing my third year of college at Utah State, I enjoyed, I joined the United States Army, excuse me, United States Marine Corps Officer Canada program and went on active duty on 1st of July of that year. Now, through the courtesy of the warlords in Japan, I spent World War II in the Pacific. My last combat was on Iwo Jima. But in 1946, I was out as a civilian and I went to the University of California in Berkeley to finish my undergraduate degree as a landscape architect in city planning. I moved to Washington, D.C. in 1952 and took a job with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers as the director of logistics. Now, we had 65 field offices on water resources and construction management, and my staff and I had to ensure that the logistics support for those missions were there. So I traveled. 50% of my time, I was on the road. I was in every state in the United States, in Europe, in Great Britain, in Italy, Saudi Arabia, Israel, the Philippines, South Africa. Those are just a few places I made stops. Well, Along that way, I had a wife, a very pleasant wife. We raised two children, one boy and one girl. Both of them have families, and they've given me great-grandchildren, three boys and one girl, all under the age of five. <laughs> my greatest interest right now is my great is my granddaughter. She's a Toastmaster, works with the Bank of America in North Carolina, and reserved her DTM three weeks ago. Very proud of her. Well, we wanted to thank you. I appreciate that clock. It's good to have somebody in the family follow. Now, I started in Toastmasters in 1958. 
actually in October. And I've served on the board of directors and been in almost every function there is. But the interesting thing is, I worked my way down. I worked my way down from club president to international president in 1976. Well, during my scattering time around the world, I attended over 2,000 club meetings and therefore had a good feel for what we do. A couple of things I think are important. First one is I led the battle to get the, battle, the bylaws changed to allow women to join Toastmasters. We had them for a number of years, but we, they were not legitimate, and we had them hidden under men's names and, that, and initials and things of this sort. I was able to get that done in 1973. That might be a basis for a story later on. I participated in setting up a reserve fund for the organization when I found we were not able to pay our world headquarters staff. Now we're a multi-million dollar operation. Change the organization chart. A long time. The, the organization chart showed us with the president on top and the club at the bottom. I thought that was the wrong message. It took me a number of years to get the change made, but finally did, and we ended up with a service chart that has now been modified a number of times, but it shows, in effect, the club on top and the international president on the bottom in a support role, which I think is the right message. Well, I'm still involved in advisory work with the board and with the world headquarters, and so I'm not out of the, that part of organization, but I've been lost out of the Toastmaster club operation for over three years. How fortunate I think I've been. Survived two wars, was able to raise a good family, but I spent 58 years helping people achieve Dr. Spendley's dream. Well, 70 years and six minutes, Maybe I did it in the list, but it's been a great day, and I thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, Bob. That was pretty amazing to sum up all those years in six minutes. In fact, it was less. It was more like five minutes. Well done. The red comes come up now, so we're exactly exactly on time. Lots of Toastmaster experience there. You know exactly how to do it. Thank you very very much.